Are you looking for fifth wheel living space, but you want it all in one flat deck? Stay tuned, I got a good one. Hello and welcome to Bish's RV of Coldwater, Michigan, everybody. Hanging out here at my hometown store with an update on the 26RL Cherokee Alpha Wolf under the Forest River series right here. In case you're kind of curious, sometimes people ask, what does the dash L stand for? Basically, it just means laminated because historically, Cherokees were only sticking tin campers. And when these came out, it was the first time they actually had like a true laminated sidewall in their lineup. This floor plan right here, what it gives us is opposing living room super slides with an island kitchen and just all kinds of windows but all wrapped her up, uh, wrapped her up? wrapped up around the door side of the camper uh, so that you get to enjoy your campsite. Now, I think they've done this one really well in a couple areas, uh, like having the dual power awnings to really maximize uh, your patio coverage. They've uh, doubled the solar and improved the charge controller this year so that it's even more expandable than it ever was before. They've made it so that now we can actually grab a ladder and attach it to the back of the RV to be able to get up to the roof to check on that solar or to just maintain our membrane and all that good stuff. They've done some great things, some nice improvements. Uh, that I, I think you're really going to like. It does have a couple hiccups, like it has a camp queen bed. It is at least a private bedroom though, so it's got a little bit of a give and a take. It's got a push and a pull. Um, some people have been really, really happy with these, and some people are going to see a couple things. They're going to say, hmm, instant deal breaker. I'm going to do my best to show you the good with those points of concern to let you be a better, more educated consumer so that you can decide if this is the right one for you or not. And if you appreciate that, hit subscribe. And let's get going. And right away, that touched up, richer, warmer wood tone, still kind of on the neutral, lighter side of things, um, but uh, it, it, it just kind of hits me. It just has a little bit more of that sort of natural wood look and tone. I like it a lot. Um, last year, it was a little bit brighter, almost a little bit more yellow and flat, and now it's got that kind of luster to it that I really enjoy. But like I said, this is like a floor plan. If what you want is fifth wheel living space, but you don't want to give out the bed of your truck or you just don't want to spend the money on a fifth wheel, that's where this one kind of comes in. We have opposing living room super slides with an island kitchen, direct facing entertainment, theater seat, table and chairs, hide a bed. That is like a description of a, a fifth wheel layout all day long on this thing. And we're going to get to see all this uh, like open and closed in basically two different ways uh, when you hang with us. Um, give me a little bit of time. I'll even close up the slide and show you how this thing operates in what I call road mode. Now, that is heat and massage theater uh, seating, by the way. And if you look at the seat side windows, you notice that they're nice and big for viewing, but they do not open for airflow. And again, I will do the best that I can to always give you good and fair information. But this rear wall is something that they've done very well. So the window coverage is excellent. That's a trifold sleeper sofa that we'll get to see open. It creates a nice little conversation corner. You've got full-size side stands that can actually fit like a dinner plate. But what I love back there is the location of those household and USB outlets just above the countertop level on those side stands. To me, that is the best position for those things because if you're actually camping in the RV so, so often, you just, uh, like, if the plugs were down here by the floor level next to that electric space heat and fireplace, they would like, you'd, you'd be stretching your cords to try to use them. You'd constantly be like jerking on the uh, like USB cords or something like that. Um, it just wouldn't be fun and easy. That position right there is perfect. This is also a fantastic uh, entertainment position, although you might notice that Alpha lets you pick your own uh, television here. A lot of people already have, say, like a TV in their basement, or they'd rather have a smart TV instead of like a basic TV provided from a manufacturer. Because Alpha Wolf, if you hadn't noticed, they're a big bang for your buck brand, but they're not a we're going to do everything and be the most expensive, fanciest RV brand out there. Sometimes they let you kind of pick things. Sort of like your entertainment. And I don't just mean TV. Notice that you don't see a stereo. This is an interesting new change, and I'm kind of in favor of it. Instead of a stereo unit, this little thing that's uh, blue and blinking at us, basically you will Bluetooth to the RV's audio system and whatever you feel like playing off of that Bluetooth enabled device is what will be pumping through your, uh, your RV uh, audio, which is I think very, very interesting. There are some TVs that can also pair up to various uh, Bluetooth devices. So depending on the type of smart TV you get, you might be able just to Bluetooth right to the RV's audio and just use it like normal. It just sort of depends on what you wanna do with it a little bit, you know? Um, the kitchen is very straightforward. We'll get a, a look at this in a minute, but it has all the major fa uh, factors here. The one thing that I think some people might get a little hung up on 
is they didn't quite have the space to give it good symmetry on either side of the stove. I do like, though, that they did leave us a nice little coffee maker corner there. Although, if you're looking for an appliance bar, this big chunk of counter space and cabinet space over there is definitely where you want to be looking. Now, as we look over here, you see over on the door side, this super slide, like all the windows over here, overlooking your campsite. And of course, you have some privacy shades if the uh, sun is making this thing just screaming awful hot. But the fact is you get to enjoy your site instead of just the neighbors. Now down here, you might notice uh, only two chairs currently. One of the nice things though, this does come with a pair of fold away uh, guest chairs. And you see those roll down zebra blinds right there, giving you the ability to kind of choose um, how much light, how much privacy you want. Now, some people dislike the look of those zebra shades. Some people dislike how they... Um, they, they can give some people, I, I guess, a migraine when they're going up and down that kind of, uh, you know, strobe pattern effect. Um, that's why I kind of like to, you know, have them up or down and then uh, do this video. I don't want to give my viewers a headache or anything like that. Now, again, over here in the kitchen, it's a little unassuming because so much of this floor plan is focused on the living room. The storage over here is fantastic. You've got a legit pantry going on. Um, it does feel like maybe there's a little bit of wasted space under that oven. I don't know what's down there because it's paneled off. I wonder if there isn't something there you could get to. And speaking of getting to things under that coffee bar, one of those big doors is actually an access panel to be able to get to things like your furnace and some systems items. You see that skirted stainless sink um, inset into the, the island, actually black stainless, which I have always felt is very eye appealing personally. It just looks very gunmetal cool, you know what I mean? But um, the island's also very asymmetrical, which allows when the sink is in use, that big farm sink, you still maintain some really good, really functional countertop space over here, which, um, you know, considering the fact this is a living room focused floor plan, the total kitchen prep space and capacity, frankly, I think is pretty darn good. One other thing here, you might have noticed there are not floor vents in these. They do use cabinet side ducted heating wherever possible. And that is just one of those kind of, uh, you know, just peace of mind, easier cleaning kind of convenience things. Some people dislike carpet and slides. Some people like carpet and slides. They like having their feet feel a little bit warmer when they're sitting over there. Um, different brands might have similar things like Wildwood in their Heritage Glen series has a very similar floor plan that for 2023 has actually gone carpetless. Now, this is a dual entry bedroom and bathroom. Some people really like those and some people really don't care for them. It just kind of all depends on personal preferences. Um, I, I would love it if some folks left some comments. You know, would you prefer a one door bathroom or a two door bathroom and why? And also, if you would, let me know, are you mostly like a solo or couples camper situation or do you do some guest camping? Because I wonder sometimes if you have guests frequently, if the dual entry bed and bath wouldn't be a little more conducive. Now, this is fairly fluffy friendly. We've got some nice space around that porcelain foot flush stool right there. And notice too, we do have one of the big, uh, like 11 inch XL vent fans. The RV is six and a half foot tall. So if you're over six foot tall, like me, I'm about six, one, two, three, whatever, depends on the shoes and the hat on a given day. Um, I need to put my head in the skylight to be able to stand in that shower. But one of the nice things about the way they've done this bathroom is that they have created a nice chunk of like linen and or, you know, um, just personal storage for like shampoos, body washes, conditioners, uh, anything like that. Just whatever works for you. Now, the Cherokee group is fantastic, by the way, at giving us big sinks and a full medicine cabinet as opposed to just a mirror on the wall. And you see that that trend persists here um, in the uh, bathroom space, even here in the Alpha Wolf. Big old viewing window, once again, does not open for airflow. I will always try to tell you all the info I can, even if it's not awesome. Kind of like the fact that let's go ahead and rip this Band-Aid off. This is a Camp Queen. That is a short queen bed. There's room for a true queen in there, but then you kind of cut the bedroom off a little bit. Maybe that's where that dual entry door might come in handy and allow some people to maintain uh, easier full access to this if you do upgrade the uh, uh, mattress to something that's a little bit longer. Now, if you're not as tall as me, it probably wouldn't matter. And what's funny is I'm a side sleeper and I actually don't mind if my feet hang off the bed. That's not something that actually bothers me. Um, but some people, it really, really does. And I want you to know what you're getting and what you're not. And in case you hadn't noticed, both sides of the bed, very handy with household and USB plugs. So no matter if you're running a stand fan or just a phone charger, you're good to go. 
So considering the fact that in road mode, we're actually starting here in the bedroom and there's two ways to get to the bathroom, uh, the nap and crap accessibility is absolutely not a question. The big question is what happens when you get back here. And unfortunately, this big door side super slide just basically straight cuts the camper off. There is one factor to consider here though. Those uh, triple step fold out stable steps that this RV is equipped with. If you can fold those down, they stick out further than the slide. That means that if you can put the steps down, you can open the slide. So what does that mean for kitchen access if you're willing to do that? And it turns out, no, no, you can't. Um, sometimes that little, uh, hey, the steps stick out further than the slides thing uh, acts like a get out of jail free card. But if you look at this, it doesn't quite work. However, I actually do have one last idea that could make this work for you. Something a lot of people don't realize about almost every single RV refrigerator door is they are reversible. So if you did want it to flip the other way, if you're willing to open the door side slide to get in here, you could make that refrigerator travel accessible. But by default, it isn't. And I want you to know what it is and what it's not. So once again, you can just make the best decisions possible with the most information available. So stepping outside, first things first, let's talk towing. What kind of vehicle are you looking at to move this thing around and the trick with towing is that yeah you can look at the numbers on the vehicle and the trailer and they have to stay in the black but there's also like real world factors like uh, are you going through hills mountains valleys are you going through crazy cross breeze wind country like my uh, brothers and sisters at uh, say like one of our Iowa dealerships like it's just insane winds over there those factors play into things the maximum weight of this RV the base weight plus all uh, like full tanks and cargo and everything is 8,900 pounds the RV itself comes in I believe just over 71 or something like that something in that range well that is going to be uh, you know, at the upper end of what a lot of people might consider half ton towable. You may also want to look at the length of this one. Depending on your, like if you're going to be flat landing, you're going to be local, maybe a properly equipped half ton might feel all right to you. But if you're going to be long distance towing through adverse terrain, I personally think on something this size, you would not regret a three quarter ton. But I would actually ask for ownership feedback out there. What kind of things have you folks seen uh, you know, as actual owners uh, towing one of these around. Do you think a half ton? Do you think a three quarter ton? You know, what is your input on this? Now you may have noticed we've got a black tank flush full outside shower there. And did you notice how all the gate valves were fully enclosed on this? It's a single sewer outlet camper as well. So you don't have to worry about doing a two stage, um, you know, sewer dump stinky slinky situation. New tankless on demand water heater. Get used to that folks. It seems like everybody and their brother's doing that this year. And this is perhaps the best angle I could ever show you the new like mirrored tint that they basically have on the uh, the windows over here. Last year, they had absolutely zero tint. So that should help keep, well, one, give you some privacy, and two, keep the uh, sunshine and heat out of this thing. Now, looking over here, I love how they fully finished that off. It is a full true pass-through with big doors on both sides. Now, flipping sides and looking over here, again, full big doors on both sides. If I'm being picky, that little uh, battery disconnect, I would kind of prefer that if it was up a little higher away from shifting cargo. And a uh, newly improved, um, what I want to say there, charge controller should theoretically be able to handle up to 500 watts of uh, solar power now. Although that may require a little bit of uh, beefing up of some wiring gauges on the RV. You saw the drunken uncle leash latch up there right next to that uh, baggage compartment. And if you look at this, it's got an awfully small awning. Thankfully, it has a second awning also equipped on it to really maximize our patio space. Um, and I, I personally prefer that as compared to a, uh, an awning that goes over the slide out because when they go over the slide, it feels like you lose a lot of the awning, although you do kind of gain a free uh, you know, slide awning in a sense when it's open, obviously. Outside TV and entertainment hookups, I love how those speakers are nice and down low and we do have ourselves a gas grill cooker hooker hanging off the side over here. So if you feel like doing some grilling or griddling or fiddling or chittling or whatever you feel like doing, um, ch chittling? I don't know either. Uh, you've got the perfect place there to do it. 
um, kind of in the little private secluded area of the camper too. Now, if you look at the upper right corner of the back wall of this, you see that there's one of those new detachable ladder mounts. Here's a quick little sample of what one of those things looks like right there. They do not include the ladder from the factory. That's just one that I happen to have lying around, but obviously we have access to those. If that's what you need, we can make it happen. Looking up top there, you see that larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner, an extremely polar white roof membrane, helping reflect more sun also helping keep this RV a little bit more cooler and more comfortable. Cool and comfortable, two things I certainly was not in high school, mind you. Uh, on the back here, you may also notice, like all the Cherokee RVs, you've got the LCI Insight Bluetooth backup camera built right into this thing. Uh, factory standard, it just basically you can monitor it right off your phone, which is kind of cool. Sometimes I like a separate monitor, sometimes it's nice having it on the phone. If you prefer a different kind of camera situation, that's certainly something that we can assist you with. You may have noticed the underbelly was enclosed, uh, forced air heated, great extended season package. And then over here, this is what I call not an ounce of space gone to waste. There's an area of storage behind the entertainment center and they didn't want to waste it, kind of like Steven Tyler. They just basically didn't want you to miss a thing. <laughs> Um, by the way, the slides on these are also all slide awning ready. Some people might ask, why don't they already have slide awnings on them? And that's a good question because normally in the RV business, you only hear the good side of things. That's one of the things I really pride us on is sharing the good with the bad or just fair information, the points of consideration. Slide awnings are great for keeping debris off. Here in the Midwest where there's a lot of tree coverage, oh, they are fantastic. But I say the Midwest, I kind of mean Michigan because uh, like I said, our Iowa store, that's in the Midwest. It's flat and it is windy as all get out. And it can actually cause those things to flap and potentially slap and potentially damage the top of your slides. So there are some areas in which slide awnings are great and there's some areas in which you don't want them. And helping you understand which one's which before you spend your money, that's our goal here at Bish's RV. Now they are certainly not the only brand that builds a floor plan like this. I'll see if I can't scrounge up a couple similar floor plans to leave a link in the video description. And of course, in those links, you'll also find uh, where you can check out uh, pricing and availability on this or any of the other RVs that we have at Bishes.com. So as always, uh, let me know your favorite points and let me know the one thing you'd change on this one given the opportunity and understand that that feedback is truly helping shape this product. Uh, when you're ready, we're ready. We're family owned and operated and we'd love to deal with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.